right now. My mom and I are in Eleanor, West Virginia, and we're now in day four of the water crisis. Day three of the water crisis, as it's been made public, basically. Um, it was made public on January 11th at 5 p.m. And it is now January 13th. Thursday. What if Thursday was? I don't even know what day it is anymore. The Next last Sunday. <laughs> few days have been crazy. So it happened Thursday. We found out about it Thursday evening. It became national news Thursday or Friday morning. Now we're at the water filling and distribution station. You can see the Eleanor Volunteer Fire Department is here. And I believe that over there we have Red Cross workers distributing the cases of bottled water and there's the American Red Cross disaster relief truck and then over here we have what are called water buffaloes and those are from the National Guard and those are just filled with gallons of water that people can place in their water, water containers whatever kind they have I heard people have been using not only water bottles but things like Rubbermaid storage containers gas cans. I even heard someone was using kitty litter so I don't know. bottles, um, which I don't know how they clean those out first. Maybe they clean them out just using the water at the filling station before they filled them up. And people, you know, other people are just going out and buying lots and lots of water and creating even more of a water shortage because they're afraid of how long it's going to be before we get more water. I think one of the biggest messages that I've been hearing is that they don't want people to buy so much more water than they actually need because it's creating more of a shortage. And now we're just leaving this parking lot and there are so many of these set up all over the different affected areas but I've heard that there are people who either can't leave their homes because of illnesses, um, age, and a lot of these people are out in rural areas. And that's been one of the concerns is that um, people, you know, never got any water deliveries to their home, which you would think in a crisis like this they would. And, you know, that's something to really think about how much manpower or human power we have here to do this. I know a lot of people have come into town or into the state from Pennsylvania. I think I even saw some people from Arkansas or something like that the other day coming to offer their services handing out water and they also need people at the distribution centers or you know where they've collect the National Guard has distributed the water or placed the water in one area and then they need people to take that water and then distribute it to all the distribution centers around the affected areas. That's where the water's going to come from back there. Okay so the, there's a West Virginia American water plant right back there. National Guard is also back there and you can see that's the West Virginia locks and dams and the Kanawha River which is one of the tributaries of the Ohio River and is of course connected to the Elk River which is where the spill occurred. Now I know yesterday you know we heard a lot about how it was between two and five thousand gallons that leaked out of the But then it was actually fewer gallons than that that actually escaped the containment walls and into the river. But then later reports yesterday, and that's the West Virginia Eleanor Bridge we're looking at right now, later reports yesterday we heard it was actually more like five to 7,000 gallons. And then a, por a smaller portion of that actually escaped the containment walls. 
that beautiful light streaming down through the clouds. Maybe there's hope. You know, it's definitely a big inconvenience here for people not to have water. It's dangerous for some people. Some people, you know, are in the hospital and can't have their surgeries done. People in nursing homes are suffering. I talked to someone who worked in a nursing home yesterday and said, you know, they can't properly wash the residents there, which is a problem, especially, you know, when you're someone lying in a bed all day and you, you can't get clean, that can cause sores and infections. And it's difficult to wash someone out of a gallon jug of water. I think they're using baby wipes. Yeah, they're mostly using baby wipes, which we have a shortage of here. We have a shortage of baby wipes, paper and plastic um, plates and utensils. There's the McDonald's, which is Thursday. And earlier I said it was the 13th. It's actually the 12th. Uh, Subway is closed. And the difficulty too, you know, it's not that we're just being, we're complaining that fast food restaurants are closed. You can't cook food. <laughs> so if you can't cook and you can't eat out, you're, you know, eating things that you, you can't cook and those are in short supply here because everyone's bought them all up because they're panicking, understandably. And we're pulling into my parents' gas station right now. And it's slow right now, but I'm sure here it's 10, it's a typical Sunday. 10 54. It's a typical Sunday, but I'm sure it'll pick up. And I'm going to go do some editing now and let's go, girl. Help out with my mom. <laughs> okay.